With Joe Biden bumbling and approval ratings tumbling and Boris Johnson prattling on about Peppa Pig, we ask, are these men really our leaders? How did this happen? Well, it's through corrupt electoral systems. Oh. <laughs> God made 4.4 million miracles that day, and I welcome each and every one of you. Before we get into these crazy leaders that we keep electing, I'd like to say that I'm on tour in the United Kingdom. There are dates east, north, south, west, and some new ones coming in Scotland. So please click on the link if you want to come and see me live. Now, how? How exactly have we ended up, after all of the equality movements, after the investigations in a democracy, with, in my country, England, an old Etonian Toff and your country, America, a mad, old, blundering, stumbling, stuttering, stumbling goon. What leads to this? And is it quite funny? This was the keynote speech of the annual CBI conference of business leaders. This is the keynote. This is democracy. Let's communicate with one another. This is the leader. This is the person in charge. If aliens come and say, take me to your leader, this is who we're taking them to. So let's see what he's got to say in the keynote. So with, with safer streets, uh, with great local schools, uh, with fantastic uh, broadband. Uh, Firstly, even at this point, he don't look very much in control of what he's doing, does he? Like, he's looking down at the bits of... Like, when I do these videos, which are just on the internet, like, I'm, I'm making eye contact, I'm concentrating on what... I'm not like, oh, dear, sorry, I've got to do a thing about... Oh, well, what are we going to do? I'm confused. I'm not confused. I'm present and I'm awake and I'm thinking about reality. Who are these people? How do they keep getting positions of power? Are the systems that put these people in positions of power reliable or do they need to be radically altered? Uh... <laughs> Oh, he's briefing. If someone did this to me on the phone, I'd be disgusted. Get a grip. Call later. Uh, this better be good. Forgive me. Well, at least that bit was quite sweet. Like someone on their deathbed. Forgive me. I may not have always been the best leader. No, you weren't. Forgive me. Oh, I can't mind. You can't be too forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, free forgive me. The pressure's really mounting. This better be something like, this is what I'm anticipating now. We're going to radically reorganise society. We're going to pay health workers properly. We're going to have communities run by the people that live in them. We're going to empower people and end all this phony fake division. We're going to break down monopolies around tech. We're going to break down the big banks. This is a new world. We're going to deliver to you the kind of democracy you deserve. Hands up anyone who's been to Pepper Big World. No, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Although, I... <laughs> I have been to Peppa Pig World, but I don't see how it's relevant now. I was, well, it's, it's fact, I was a bit hazy what I would find at Peppa Pig World. What do you mean? What did you not anticipate? Peppa Pig, Mama Pig, Papa Pig, maybe Daddy Dog, maybe Granddad Rabbit. They're all going to be there, Mrs. Rabbit, and her endless jobs. We know what to anticipate. We're parents of the young children, particularly you, Boris. Uh, but I loved it. Peppa Pig World is, is very much my kind of place. What do you mean? Qualify what you mean by that. Because what I'll tell you what I thought of Peppa Pig World. I did have a very nice time, but all the rides are basically the same. You're just going round and round. One point you're pretending you're on a boat, really. Another time you're pretending you're on a car. Another point you're pretending you're on a hot air balloon. But all the while the central power remains the same. No wonder you like it. Uh, it, it has uh, a uh, very safe streets. Uh, you can't even finish a perfectly innocuous analogy about Peppa Pig world. We're now in like softball territory. We're not on the hard edge front line of political discourse, dealing with diamond mines and serrated wit, looking to dagger you down into an egalitarian system, waiting to yank you down from your lofty perch and present you with something akin to democracy. We're prattling on about Peppa Pig and we can't cope. What's going on? This dude did classics at Oxford, went to Eton, the finest educational institutions known to man. He can't even tell you what he did at the weekend. Uh, in your speech to the CBI, you lost your notes, you lost your place, you went off on a tangent about Peppa Pig. Frankly, is everything okay? I think that uh, I think that people uh, got the vast majority of the uh, of the points I wanted to make. Yeah, you know, I understood what you're saying that uh, Peppa Pig World is quite nice. You're surprised that more people haven't been there and that the streets are safe. I mean, it'd be more worrying if you went to Peppa Pig and were confronted by like a bunch of rabbits with flick knives. That would be news. I thought uh, I thought it went over well. Thank you, thank you. 
Oh dear. I mean, there are some points when I'm doing these things, I have to remind myself, I'm talking about human beings that are ultimately worthy of love and compassion. I get excited by the comedic prospect of dealing with people in positions of power that organise, engineer and preside over so much misery in ordinary people's lives. I take a little bit of glee and rip it in, but that is just another human being like you or me that will fade into history, that entropy will claim and the molecules that make up Boris Johnson will one day drift apart into nothingness. Problem is, maybe we won't notice. Thank you. Don't worry though, Britain is a faded superpower. The empire is over. The bastion, the baton, has been handed over to the United States of America. And now we've got rid of that frightful Donald Trump character. Now we can safely rest and bask in the glow of the brilliant mind of Joe Biden. So the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway. If you try your hardest, to follow that, you know, I mean, it's like sort of trying to follow some like distant comet. No, it happens. Like there is, is there? Can you see it? No, or that the magic eye pictures that were a big deal about 15 years ago. Can you see it? Is that a dinosaur? Oh, it's a dinosaur. All right. I'm, we're going to get a lot done. I've got a lot of faith in you. And also, we've got state leadership here. Lieutenant Governor Julius here, Stratton, and the Ohio, Pennsylvania, the Ohio, Pennsylvania, I'm from Pennsylvania. The, uh, the, uh, the Illinois president uh, of the, uh, Don Harmon, State Senator Laura Murphy, State Rep uh, um, Martin Mo uh, Mo Moylan, and uh, we've got great labor leaders here too. Tim, where's Tim? Get a blanket, get a blanket and usher that man off the stage. In almost any other circumstance, that person will be taken out of the vulnerable position he's evidently in there. To have someone so absent-minded in an apparent position of power is kind of ridiculous. But the reason I suppose it's not as preposterous as I'm hereby claiming is because we sort of know that these roles are theatrical, performative rather than practical. Like, you know, don't you, that the same non-governmental agencies and the same governmental bodies will continue to collude regardless of who is in power. And now with a little bit of retrospect hindsight, it seems that a figure like Donald, Donald Trump, was that the guy's name? Like the, he was a kind of anomaly because he was a sort of a bit of a spanner in the works, a roguish figure. But even he, if you ask me, was dampened into sort of ordinary governance ultimately. Did anything really radically change? If you're on one side of the political argument, you'll probably think, oh God, he was vulgar. If you're on the other side, you think, wow, he really championed ordinary people. But really, really, what changed? Let's have a look at what the um, media has to say about it. A new poll by Politico Morning Consult has found that the margin between voters who believe Joe Biden is in good mental health and those who disagree has swung from 21 percentage points to minus two. Only 46 percent of voters agreed that he was in good mental health and 48 percent disagreed. As many as 50 percent disagreed that he was in good health overall, meaning there was a swing of 29 percentage points from October 2020. The findings come many months into his presidency and days ahead of his 79th birthday on Saturday. He's already the oldest serving US president. This is because there's some presumed lineage within the Democrat Party, isn't it? It's a mistake that they seem to continually make. Let's have Hillary Clinton. Oh, I don't think people like her. Yeah, but Hillary Clinton. All right, OK, well, that's not worked. How about Joe Biden? Oh, I'm not sure. Isn't he a little bit old? And he's been around for ages and he's been in government when loads of stuff's gone down. He's voted against gay marriage. He's been involved in all them work. Should we not? Should we not? No. Let's. I think I'm going to try very much hard to, uh, it, it is, um, by the way, there's places where I shouldn't be starting off and negotiating in public here, but let me say it this way. Russia. Ooh, it's actually just bad casting, isn't it? Because if you think that someone's primary function is to appear before the media, like someone like Ronald Reagan makes sense. So does someone like Donald Trump. I mean, anybody, Bill Clinton, Obama, figures that are erudite and able to communicate cogently is precisely what's required by that position, even if you, like me, think that that position is in itself ridiculous. And that's what's being revealed. Don't you have a sense that you're living in a time of unravelling, that reality is sort of teetering somehow, that you're presented with 
odd fissures and peculiar glitches that it's starting to not make sense like in your own life and as you watch the zoetrope of modern media confection and normal economic life that things don't make sense that some things are being ushered in that seem unreal and make you uneasy i believe this to be true and even though in one way this is a light-hearted look at a couple of political figures being unable to perform their basic ceremonial functions it's also a critique on the ridiculousness of systems that have requirements that lead to this kind of unspectacle, this anti-spectacle, this kind of vivid rendering of the ultra-ordinary or even the substandard, deteriorating figures, unable to communicate clearly. In a sense, what about if you look at it this way, that these archetypes have been brought forth to show you the truth, that there is a senility in American democracy. In a way, Joe Biden becomes the perfect president, unable to keep up the facade. I grew up under the uh, augur of American greatness, whether it was movies or cultural figures, Hendrix, Bill Hicks, great, brilliant demagogic, um, masterful performers, brilliant rhetoric and incredible art, fast food, fancy jeans. And now what are we witnessing? It seems something somewhat apocalyptic and the division, the bifurcation of the culture, I would say is one part of it, but the symbol of a deteriorating president, I would say is another one. And as for England, well, it's a parody. It's a joke. It's a sort of, you know, the first time it happens as tragedy, then as comedy. You know, we have the figure of Churchill with his mental illness, his flaws, his penchant for wars, wars that he won, oratory at which he was masterful, although some say that this was constructed even then. And now what do we get? A kind of imitative pastiche, a blonde, mocked, fop, baby bird, ridiculous, anti-Churchill figure propped up in the pulpit, espousing speeches about Peppa Pig world of all places. A theme park. Well, we're all living in a theme park now. And the theme is it's an illusion. What do you say to Vladimir Putin? <laughs> well, look, I mean, he has made clear that uh, uh, Again, with both of these figures, where I come from spiritually, the sort of truest, realist part of me, is we've got no business criticising and being mean about other human beings. I suppose it's because it's such an obvious symbol of degradation and deception. So my real opinion, you know, rather than doing stuff that's funny, because I recognise that entertainment is part of the reason you come to this channel, my real opinion is, oh my God, I'm sort of worried about these people. That's my real opinion. Are they all right? But there is a sort of a deeper concern about the machinery that presents this as acceptable. One of the reasons why I decided to talk about the need to deal with uh, um, uh, uh. Mr. Biden has more recently been accused of falling asleep or closing his eyes. I was arresting him during a COP26 session in Glasgow, to be fair. Did you try and watch any of that stuff? And faulted on his communication with the US public. Other troubling cross tabs include respondents finding Biden is not a clear communicator by 20 percentage points and that he's not energetic. Bloody hell. I mean, by what criteria could you come to any conclusion other than this guy's not communicating well and he ain't energetic? I mean, compared to what? You'd have to be comparing him to sculptures and sort of tectonic plates to say that, well, he's moving quite a lot. A recent Washington Post ABC survey found that just over 40 percent of voters approved of Biden. The White House has said that Joe Biden intends to run for real election in 2024. He should be running anywhere. He shouldn't be running if he drops his dressing gown. That guy needs a long, long sit down and a rest. Don't you start to think when you see him campaigning. I remember seeing Hillary Clinton collapsing outside the camp. God, what are you putting yourself through all this for? What drives you? What do you want? What do you actually want? I hope it really is, as they always claim, you know, we want to serve the public and it's not something more malfeasant, more nefarious, because if it is, then... It's weird, isn't it? It's like a kind of uh, Mephistophelian possession by an energy force that's sort of puppeting them into long life while actually in senescence claiming to be still present only in order to enact institutional power that benefits no one but the already advantaged. He will be 15 days short of his 82nd birthday on the 5th of November 2024, the next time voters in the US will be asked to choose their president. So there's lots to look forward to because that actually cannot happen, can it? And I wonder what happened in my country. I suppose that's what's interesting about politics, really. It is a performance. It's a kind of a show. None of it makes sense because it can't make sense when you look at it 
coldly, clinically, rationally. These figures are in a way the perfect representatives of their systems. On one hand, you've got a person who represents old institutional elitist power. On the other hand, you've got a system in decay and decline. Deep unconscious truths are being relayed to us through these totems by powerful conscious forces that we cannot begin to appreciate. The truth is evident if you're only willing to open your eyes and look at it. These systems cannot be trusted. Radical change is required and it is possible and we can do it together. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Be clear about it. Don't go bumbling. Don't doze off in the middle of it. Don't start chatting about Peppa Pig bands or any of that kind of crap. If you like this video, have a look at this cheeky little guy. And if you want to learn to meditate now, which is said to prolong your mental acuity long into later life, have a look at my well-being channel, Awakening with Russell Brand. Sign up to my mailing list and you can learn about the dates I'm doing all over the UK. Come see me live. Most importantly of all, stay free.